Okay. Um, okay. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. And um, so I just uh, obviously do a very, very quick talk about um, prognostication. Um, I was just saying, as so I'm, I'm also here, one of the consultant neurologists that uh, covers GRI, but also the Golden Jubilee with um, Tracy Baird. And almost 80% of my patients are out of hospital cardiac arrests, and uh, I'm normally asked to come over to help with prognostication. Really because it's maybe a little bit more difficult than normal and families are obviously wanting to get as much input. But in prognostications in, in intensive care, there's lots of different gamuts to it. Um, definitely the, clinic, the, the clinical approach, the clinical examination is of GCS, and if they've got reduced brainstem reflexes, um, reduced corneal reflex, pupillary reflex, or your, your, your motor compartment, um, uh, of, the, of the GCS is one or two, after three days, these are not good signs. Um, but one of the, the main things we look for is myoclonus, and that this, my, this post-hypoxic my, myoclonus or myoclonic state of epilepticus or generalized myoclonus. And just wanted to just really focus on that side of things. So about, I think it's about 18 to 22 percent of patients after cardiac arrest um, will, will develop myoclonus. There was an observational study back in 2015 that looked at this. And just looking at with the patients with myoclonus, um, what are the indicators of, of prognosis in terms of, of how the, of the, the clinical characteristics? And um, th there's a cerebral performance category scale that they use in the States. And good prognosis, good outcomes, as you can see, is number one to two, and bad outcomes, three to five. And it's pretty, I think you could work it out that, you know, if you're, if you're in VF and VT related to cardiac arrest, you've got witness arrests to shorter ischemic times and longer stays in intensive care that's associated with good prognosis. And obviously, if it's longer time that they've been down, let's say, you know, they've, they, they say the downtime was up to 20 minutes, even if it had CPR associated. If when they, the, the professionals came along, had non shockable initial heart rhythms and longer intervals before the professionals came along, these are go and increase the chance of you having less oxygen to your brain and causing more injury. And, and if you have myoclonus, uh, those are the indicators. Okay, this is a slide that I've been using for a, a few years, and this is basically to, to, to differentiate between two main, main types of myoclonus. The most common is this post-arrest myoclonus, uh, myoclonic status, that normally starts almost immediately in, in the first two days or 48 hours. And this is thought to be this unrelenting bilateral synchronous focal myoclonus, or general stroking, and it's thought that this is uniformly bad, um, the abysmal outcomes. Um, looking at the data more and more recently there, um, there is probably up to 9%, I think, said one paper, that increased the outcomes with myoclonus, and that's more with this kind of chronic type of myoclonus that is was described in the 60s by Lance and Adams, and it's a, more of a post-hypoxic action myoclonus. It's more seen after respiratory arrest or anesthesia. People are younger, and this is a focal myoclonus with action on action myoclonus or starter myoclonus. Now, these, these patients, GCS is normally much higher, okay? Um, and they do respond to uh, anti-epileptics, the where the GCS with post arrest myoclonus status are, are low. The only the problem is that you normally only see the myoclonus after 48 hours because they've had two days of hypothermia and paralysis following the out of hospital cardiac arrest. So one one study that looked at the myoclonic semiology in 2017 to to aid kind of the, the diagnosis of what the myoclonus is is by differentiating the type of myoclonus that that presents with. So you can have what well, they say type one, which is distal, asynchronous and variable, type two, which is axial and as distal and asynchronous and variable, and one which is this axial synchronous stereotyped um, uh, type that was I described in the, the previous slide. And type one and two can be associated with a better outcome. And they are more associated with maybe cortical structure injuries and um, with variable distal myoclonus. Ones with the subcortical structural injuries, those in the in basal ganglia, the uh, caudate head, impeachment, they're associated with much more axial and stereotype myoclonus with a poor outcome. So 
looking at semiology is actually really, really helpful what type of myoclonus it is, because it might be an early type of Lance Adams syndrome, which does carry a developed prognosis. And this is all very important when you're informing the decisions for withdrawal of life support. So I think that's actually my five minutes.